So we've learned about glands. So I've talked about glands before, both comparing exocrine and endocrine glands, as well as talking about the tissues that make up glands, and also already talked about the modes by which glands secrete stuff. So this video is going to apply what we've learned before in previous weeks about glands to the three cutaneous glands, which are all exocrine. Um, so it should be some familiar stuff, but um, here we go. So first to remind you, glands are composed of cuboidal or columnar epithelium and typically stratified. So it is the rare case where we have this type of tissue. So sweat glands are multiple layers, stratified cuboidal epithelium, and salivary glands are multiple layers, stratified columnar epithelium. And you saw this before with tissue types. So the cutaneous glands, which I mentioned in the previous lecture already, um, are all in the skin right? This is all the skin here. Cutaneous membrane is another word for it. So this over here, I went through these in the previous video. Maybe you remember these ones are the eccrine. These are sweat glands that function in evaporative cooling all over the body, widely distributed across your entire body. and they secrete ducts right onto the surface of the skin to participate in evaporative cooling, sweating. This is what you think of when you think of as sweat. This stuff is hypotonic to your blood. So the stuff they make is very watery, fairly watery. Okay, then we've got over here, the other type of, actually, this is a type of sweat gland. This is another type of sweat gland, but this is um, the one that I mentioned before, releases onto a hair follicle. So these are called apocrine, and they are thought to function as scent glands. So they produce a more oily, viscous stuff in, and they're located more in the pubic, axillary, and facial hair regions. They are going to open um, onto ducts right onto the hair follicles. Lastly, this last one are actually not sweat glands. They are called sebaceous glands. They are oil glands. They are associated always with hair follicles. So you saw that in the hair, um, the video that I talked about hair, accessory structures. And they are gonna help to um, lubricate those, those hairs. We've also already talked about three modes of secretion. So merocrine secretion is the release of vesicles the secreted substance is going to be released in a, in a vesicle. So these are gonna be sweat glands. There's two types of sweat glands, right? Both use the same, same type. So the secretion is going to be one of those two substances. Then there is the other one used by a sebaceous gland, which is, I'm sorry, by a cutaneous gland, and that's why I said that it is the sebaceous gland that uses this. Holocrine secretion. This is when the entire cell basically burst. Cells burst. Very dramatic. Holo is like a whole thing. In this case, it's going to be oil. Apocrine secretion is that third type um, that is not applied to these three types of glands. Um, this is where cytoplasm chunks fall off, which apparently I can't write. Okay, so let's look at each type of gland and the type of secretion it uses. Nothing really new here. 
So these are the two types of sweat glands. So believe it or not, this title is maybe helpful. Sweat glands we're talking about, they both use merocrine secretion. So this one is, oh, eccrine's already labeled there. This other one is the apocrine. Confusingly, this is also called merocrine sweat glands. Um, I don't feel a need to do that, but you'll see it some places. That's why it's in parentheses. And again, these two types are both using merocrine, which means what? Vesicles being produced in the cell and then being released um, into the lumen and then into the outside of the body. So either out of sweat pore or onto the hair follicle itself. Either way, exo, um, exocytosis out of the cell and then an exocrine gland. Okay, and then remember, this is kind of your typical sweat glands, watery, hypotonic compared to the brain blood um, thermal regulation, as well as a little bit of role in secretion, uh, excretion of, of wastes can occur there. Apocrine is the one that's this thick, thicker, sticky stuff is actually produced from blood plasma um, with then proteins and fats added in. Stinkier. Okay, then we've got Sebaceous glands use holocrine secretion, which you already know, right? So this means what happens? Here is the epithelial cells, there's basal cells dividing. That's particularly important in these because they need to be regenerating because the cells are bursting constantly. So as you kind of go up to this arrow here, um, so we've got mitosis down here. Up here, we've got basically the cell membranes breaking down. And what happens when the cell membranes break down? They're going to release sebum, the name of the stuff, into the space. This space is the hair follicle. Um, in this case, the hair follicle has been removed, so you can see that space. So what is sebum? Sebum is basically an oily, lubricating secretion. So it um, lubricates the hairs. It has antibacterial properties as well. Okay, 